Meeting to order for uh, February 5th. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, which we immediately followed by the invocation by Reverend John Peck of Bethel Assembly of God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you join me as we pray together? Our Father, tonight we give you thanks for all of your blessings. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the privilege that we have to serve you in various capacities. We ask tonight as this council meets, makes dis decisions concerning the citizens of this city, we ask you to give guidance and direction, bring wisdom to this meeting. We pray for peace, and we pray, Lord, that you will, your presence just be with us. We ask, Lord, tonight that you watch over citizens of this city and those that are out, Lord, our, our police, our fire. We ask, God, that you would be with them, watch over them, protect them as they serve. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend. If we could have roll call, please. Councilperson Darzinski. Here. Higgins. Here. Kelsey. Here. Murphy. Here. Mayor Here. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Brave the the storm or the the snow and the cold. Wish we would have had a little bit more snow at the Jack Frost Jamboree, but that is another story. Daylight and a dollar short. Um, we have a lot of things under mayor's comments today, and we have a lot of visitors in our uh, audience here today. So if I can see if I can turn this thing on. Oh, cool. <laughs> absolutely, Ed, absolutely. First is we're going to do something um, that we haven't done before, and that is for this reason we have a couple of new officers here that we're going to to swear in and uh, in fact the officers have already been sworn in it's their partners that have not so chief would you uh, bring in our, our guys and the partners and we'll we'll get them get them sworn in see if this thing works oh, that's very nice Big dog. As you see, there are two of the, the police departments yeah. doing his canines. Here Chief, you if, if you could introduce them. Put it in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Officer Harris and Sarge, and Officer Parker and Max. Oh, very nice. Nice dogs. Both officers graduated in uh, the first week in January from the Canine Academy and are currently working on the road. Oh, you all right? Uh, it's kind of fitting that uh, the first canine that the department had was, I believe, Max, wasn't it? Yeah, L. Offred's dog, I think, was was Max. All right, are you guys ready? I since I, I don't rely on the office on the dog to answering me, I'll, if you guys could respond for, respond for them, and I'm gonna when I call for your I and then your name, please answer no the dog's name, <laughs> canine officer's name. Okay, are we ready? I state your name. You solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state that I will obey the rules of the Lincoln Park Police Department rules and regulations, and I will faithfully discharge the, duty, the duties as police canine for the city of Lincoln Park according to the best of my ability. And you guys would say, I do. Make them bark. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, can they bark in there? He doesn't bark? <laughs> oh, well, that's, that, is, that is a good thing. I'm going to ask... Um, each of you guys to come in and sign this in the, in the right order. Sign it here. Oh, we got a place over there. Okay. 
the interesting part about this clipboard that the officers are signing it is that it goes back to uh, the mid 1970s. All police officers that become <laughs> and join the department have have signed there. He wants to take a bite out of it. How old is it? I was going to say, big girl, right? Work. Yeah. Beautiful dog. <laughs> you want to raise now? They've been on television. <laughs> Travel allowance or <laughs> meals. <laughs> Chief, how many canine uh, officers do we have on the road now? This will be our third. These two have made it three now. We also have uh, Sergeant Noe and Cato on the road. <laughs> I saw Joe has his canine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your the two newest canine officers and Max and Sarge. And while I have the, the chief up here, and I have the, these gentlemen and their, their dogs here, I'd like to make a, another presentation. Maybe. Are the Noah family here? Come on up. I don't think that they bite unless they're ordered to bite. The dogs, too. Upon a recommendation of the chief, we have uh, this plaque from the Lincoln Park Police Department in grateful appreciation for your continued support for our canine program. And it's from the Lincoln Park Police Department in 2018. And as a, as a retired officer, I greatly appreciate everything that, that you both that you both. Would you like to say a word, a couple words, or no? Or no? 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 <laughs> okay. And they're doing a good job. Oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please. I don't think they like lawyers. You better sit down. Careful. Okay, guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, that's definitely. <laughs> Make your rounds. <laughs> <laughs> you fire them up. <laughs> well, might be like if you want John might be going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Nice dogs, man. Next, we have uh, another very special presentation. And uh, to kick this off, we'll have Jim Bowens of the VFW. Come forward, Jim. Ah, why don't you go? Good evening, Mayor and Council. And thank you for the opportunity to come here. This is our VFW program we do once a year. We'll have a policeman of the year and a firefighter of the year. And this year we're doing something different. We're having an EMT and a firefighter. I know that they are both. We understand that. This way we can give honor two people instead of one. So we got a, a letter of these, these people. What makes it so special, they are nominated and elected by their peers. They they pick who the winner is. So that makes it more special. You know, it's one of us doing it. So I'm going to call the chief up of the police department, Mr. Waters, to read the plaque. From the sit from the employees that I have them might be a W plant. Okay. <clears throat> the award this year is going to go to Officer David Belknap. Officer Belknap was nominated by another officer uh, that you just seen today, Officer Eric Harris, for this prestigious VFW Officer of the Year Award for 2017. Officer Belknap joined the Lincoln Park Police Department on uh, January 21st of 2016 after serving 12 years with the Wayne County Sheriff Department. <clears throat> Through his tremendous work ethic, 
<coughs> excuse me, leadership skills and compassion to the citizens of Lincoln Park, Officer Belknap immediately made an impact on the department. He leads by example, arriving to work early with a positive attitude and ready to assist in any matter he can. He is well respected by his co-workers for his relentless pursuit of criminals. Although he's only been with our department for approximately two years now, Officer Belknap has received several accolades for his efforts for going above and beyond the call of duty. In 2017, Officer Belknap was recognized by the department and the Public Safety Commission for his hard work with, these <coughs> different, with three different certificates of merit and a department life-saving award. Officer Belknap was selected as a field training officer and has been entrusted with training our new officers. He's also a search instructor and is currently in the process of training the entire department in the proper technique of searching prisoners. This training has not only increased officer safety, but has also resulted in locating additional evidence and keeping contraband out of our cell block. Officer Belknap recently tried out for the Down River SWAT team and is currently in the background phase of this process and in no doubt in my mind that he will pa uh, uh, pass that with flying colors. Officer Belknap's community involvement and community service is unrevealed. He not only volunteers time for the Cops Care Picnic, Shop with the Hero Program, Goodfellows Street Collection, but he also Goodfellows Christmas Shopping and Secret Santa. He also enlists um, assistance from his co-workers and uh, his family. Officer Belknap, his wife is here tonight, and uh, she gets, uh, I'm not sure if she gets dragged along or if she directs him to, uh, to do the right thing, but they're an uh, incredible family. Officer Belknap has uh, spearheaded uh, the department's involvement in cereal drive for autistic children and a blanket and sock drive for homeless veterans. He's always one of the first officers to volunteer to assist in the funeral details and possession escorts. Re he's recently signed up to join the department's Honor Guard program. Therefore, it's with great pride that I reaffirm Officer Harris's recommendation that Officer David Belknap be selected as the VFW 2017 Police Officer of the Year. Very good. Officer David, this is uh, Benjamin B. Goodell, Post 552, Veterans and Foreign Wars of the United States, Lincoln Park, Michigan. Present a citation to Officer David Belknap for being selected by his fellow department officers as the 217 Policeman of the Year from Lincoln Park Police Department. Signed by myself and our Commander Michael Ball. Thank you, sir. I would. Uh, <clears throat> when I came here two years ago, it was a, it was a scary thing. Uh, but when I got here, I was blessed with uh, three incredible field training officers. Uh, I don't think any of them are here right now. But uh, officers Aaron Schmokel, John Stearns, and Michael Sampson, uh, they were great. They molded me into the cop I am today. And... Uh, and, and I would just want them to know uh, how much they mean to me, and I've already told them than that. Also, I want to thank uh, uh, my dad, Eric Belknap, right there. He, he's always supported uh, me and my goals, and also my wife, Jamie Belknap. Uh, she she uh, cooks for me and <laughs> <laughs> takes care of me and, and makes sure I <laughs> make sure I get to where I need to be. And she she helps out a lot with everything. So thank you both. That's it. Good. Well, you, uh, well, yeah, come forward. I'm sure that the council would like oh, to congratulate you all. <coughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, you can smile now. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's a great honor. Where is the fire chief, Mr. Martin, please? Same thing, he was nominated and elected by his peers. And I said, this year we've got two. And uh, the chief will read the, you got a copy? I do. Always come prepared. <laughs> what are you going to do first? Uh, we'll do Bob Wright first. 
unfortunately, Bob Ray couldn't be with us today. Uh, he had some other uh, obligations that he couldn't uh, get away from. But uh, Lieutenant Bob Ray has been with the Lincoln Park Fire Department for over 20 years and has worked his way through the ranks of firefighter, engineer, senior engineer, sergeant, lieutenant, and most recently, fire inspector. Lieutenant Ray is a hard worker, is always willing to volunteer his time to the community that he serves. <clears throat> Around the fire station, he's known to hold his coworkers to a high standard, especially when it comes to providing emergency medical services, but holds himself to even higher standard. When it comes to patient care, he does not believe in typical runs and always tries to do more for the patient. This past year, Bob's participation has been crucial to the success and performance of the fire department and his programs. After becoming certified by the state of Michigan and the National Fire Protection Agency as a fire inspector, he filled a critical role on the department's fire code enforcement team. This year alone, he's completed 293 commercial fire inspections in the city of Lincoln Park, conducted off-duty in addition to his normal 50.4-hour work week. He's volunteered to help in multiple town hall meetings to educate our citizens on the dangers of substance abuse and help raise awareness about the opioid epidemic being experienced across the country. He's also participated in some substance abuse talks with the students at Lincoln Park High School. <clears throat> Uh, he's also volunteered to help with the school fire safety program, giving fire safety talks to all kindergarten through third grade, uh, covering topics such as calling 911, stop, drop, and roll, changing batteries and smoke detectors, and not playing with matches. Lieutenant Wright's extra effort and volunteer attitude are just some of the reasons that he was nominated by his peers for this award. He's proven himself to be truly dedicated, professional, who is dependable, and works tirelessly for the citizens of Lincoln Park. And I'm more than happy to present Bob with this year's Firefighter of the Year Award. And again, I'm sorry they can't be here. But. Let's put it over here. Stop right there. Uh, the next one is for the Paramedic of the Year. Uh, Firefighter Dave Duncan has been with the Lincoln Park Fire Department for just over a year, successfully finishing his probationary period this past January. He also has previous experience with Rapid Response Ambulance and Westland Fire Department. Firefighter Duncan is a hard worker who is always willing to work extra shifts, come in for emergency call-ins, and volunteer his time to the community that he serves. Although he's not been with the department very long, he has quickly proven himself to be a valuable and dependable part of the team. In his first year, Firefighter Duncan has responded to 1,217 emergency medical <coughs> runs in the city, uh, the most in the entire department. Of these runs, Dave's responded to 10 cardiac arrests, 92 calls for chest pain, 53 seizures, 93 incidents of respiratory distress, and 16 cerebrovascular accidents, just to name a few. Firefighter Duncan has also volunteered to help with the school fire safety program, giving fire safety talks to all kindergarten through third grade, covering topics such as calling 911, stop, drop, and roll, changing batteries, and not playing with matches. If Firefighter Duncan's first year is any indication of his future performance, I have no doubt he'll continue to be an integral part of the Lincoln Park Fire Department. Because of his dedication, dependability, and professionalism, I'm more than happy to present Firefighter Dave Duncan with this year's Paramedic of the Year Award. <laughs> also for you, uh, Dave, Ben Davigadel, Post 552, Veterans and Foreign Wars of the United States, Lincoln Park, Michigan, presents this citation to Firefighter Dave Duncan for being selected as the 2017 EMT of the Year for the Lincoln Park Fire Department, signed by myself and the commander. I didn't really have anything prepared for this. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you. Um, didn't realize, you know, until the chief read off the numbers how busy that sounds. But uh, I just try to be a part of the team and help where I can. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing us to do this. <laughs> Say thank you to the uh, Ms. Bowens and the VFW for honoring our, our firemen and, and police. Too often they do things, the, the officers, firefighters do things without uh, 
have an attention drawn to their efforts. So I appreciate that, that greatly. And those of you that are watching at home do not get the um, see the support that other firefighters and police officers came and were with them at the time of this presentation. So usually awards for the department are handed out at the Public Safety Commission, which meets the third Thursday of the month, um, council chambers at, at 4.30. Uh, awards are given out at that particular time. I want to draw attention to the awards that were, were given at the awarded at the, the January meeting in which there are five officers that were notified or given life-saving ribbon for their quick responses and actions. I'll just uh, give you a short synopsis of those. Officers Hoyt and Timmis responded to 1524 Fort Park and reported male non-breathing. Um, Officer Hoyt performed chest compressions while Officer Timmis began administering breath and uh, Shortly after beginning CPR, the victim's pulse returned and he began to, to breathe. So because of their quick actions, they were able to, uh, to save a life. And then you have Officer Raul Villarreal, who responded to Goddard and report of a possible overdose. Um, he recognized this as a life-threatening situation and he had been used, uh, trained in the use of the naloxone administered as required dosage and the victim immediately regained consciousness. So through his quick saving, quick actions, another life was saved. And then and finally, officers Richard Walther and Anthony Kuspa also got a life-saving ribbon, um, arrived to a call on Moore Street and the uh, father of the victim was performing CPR, and uh, Walther and Cusper took over and administered a dose, a dose of naloxone again, and the, the victim was uh, revived, uh, revived, and his life was saved in, in those efforts. So there's just five instances of where your, your police department responded and made a difference in the, the saving of lives. So. A lot of good stuff happening out there from, um, from your police and fire departments. We have, next, I don't think I have the, the people in attendance here, so we'll have to bring them back. These are Pride and Property Awards for a business and a um, location that have been nominated, and the Community Improvement Commission approved. There is Jack's Auto Repair, which is 3120 Fort Street. Was, was nominated. We have a plaque available for them, and we'll make sure that they come at the next one. And 1453 Fort Park, as for the, for the residents, and we'll make sure that we get them in on the next time also. I made mention of the Jack Frost Jamboree, um, the event that was held this past Friday and Saturday at the Manchel, 3240 Ferris. 35 vendors. I, I think that it was uh, well done even though the um, sled race didn't turn out as I anticipated it would, as the, the sled I was backing finished third out of three, but hey, <laughs> life, <laughs> life happens in the big city. It was a very well done event. Uh, thank uh, Maureen Tobin, who I understand was the person responsible for putting all this, this together. There was a lot of people that, that came in and um, there were, uh, again, three sleds that participated and uh, one fellow submitted his right at the end, and of course, that's the one that won. Of course, that's how it works. The fastest one did, and this is without the snow that came today. It would have been much better with, and I think I would have won at that particular time, but that's, that's a different situation completely. At some point before the previous meeting, we had discussion from Giles Tucker, who is the EDC and DDA director, about uh, food trucks and body art facilitation survey. <coughs> And he said that he would come forward and give us the results of that survey. So the council has been given the results, but uh, Giles, if you could give us a short highlight on this. Uh, yes. Um, I just printed off a two-page um, that should be at your desk there. Um, this was 
at least from my experience, this is the first of its kind in the sense that um, this is one of the very first online-only surveys that uh, we ever conducted or I ever conducted to get uh, a feel for um, uh, how our residents felt about um, some inter uh, some use pertaining to food trucks and um, uh, body art facilities uh, was in response to um, a considerable amount of uh, inquiries on these two issues. Um, I'm pleased to say we had a total of 295 total responses in the course of a month. Um, in general, um, the responses were pretty positive in, uh, in, the, uh, in the way of food trucks. Um, I was re very, very, very pleased to see all the feedback that we received. Not only did we have a vast majority of the respondents answer all the questions, but also um, we gave them opportunities to respond. Um, I learned a lot. There was actually a lot of very insightful comments that were left as well. Um, and I just came here today to um, respond to any questions uh, uh, that the council may have um, or summarize any results that the mayor would like me to. Um, just a quick you know, approval, disapproval, um, that type of thing. Um, I would say in, in general that food trucks is a pretty supported issue based off the 295 responses that we had. Um, I would say that um, the body art facilities and tattoos was a little bit more mixed. That was closer to 50-50. Um, I would say in general um, um, outlook on, on that type of use is, is pretty good. Um, I, I would say that overall um, – I think that the community in general is in supportive for both uses, um, but it would have to go to further review with council or kind of get a better idea of how you would like to respond to this. Um, so yeah, I think it was overall it was a very good exercise. So. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> and then, um, and then lastly. I don't think I have a last week, so there we go. Um, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Resolved that the following items listed under the consent agenda be approved as presented to the mayor and city council. One, approved minutes, regular meeting held Tuesday, January 16, 2018. Two, attend training, uh, Department of Public Service. Three, attend training, Community <coughs> Center. So moved. The port. Discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Council Persons Kelty? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Jarzinski? Yes. Murphy? I'll have to abstain on the minutes, but uh, okay, and the others? Mayor Kant? Yes. Mike, are you abstaining? Yeah, I'll have to abstain on the minutes, too. Thank you. Okay. First action item. Uh, in accordance with the Uniform Budget and Accounting Act, this is a cover letter from Lisa Griggs, our Department of Finance and Operations. It is necessary to adjust the current year's budget based on projected revenues and expenditures as submitted by all departments. In preparation for the budget amendment, the city manager and I met departments to determine the line items that need to be addressed. After careful review, we have made the adjustments to the appropriate cost centers. The proposed budget amendment has been balanced for the general fund at $23,635,968 for both revenues and <coughs> expenditures. The main change to the revenues are the increased building prevent fees related to the Ford Warner project, increased revenue from the towing fees, and an estimated safer grant reimbursement. On the expenditure side, it was necessary to increase the overtime for the fire department inspector program which is paid for by the revenue generated from the inspection fees as well as an increase to the building department contractual services related to the Ford Warner project. And the line item detail is provided. You will find comments under each. All right. While the expenditures are higher than originally anticipated, the revenues have also increased over original estimates, allowing the city to absorb the expenditure increase. All other funds have been reviewed, but not all funds have adjustments. And so it is uh, resolved that the Director of Finance be and his hereby authorized 
to adjust the general appropriated revenue and expenditure budgets for fiscal year 2017-2018 as submitted. So moved. Support. Discussion? Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Councilperson Kelsey? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Garzinski? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Mayor Kearns? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from Doreen Christian, Director of the Office of Community Planning and Development, and uh, solicit bids for Senior Center brick facade to restoration. And background is inspections were done on the footings and brick by McDowell and Associates. It is noticed quite a few years back that the brick was cracking on the Senior Center. Eventually the brick was flaking off in certain areas which progressively has gotten worse over time. Uh, okay. Then whereas the Senior Center has been having issues with the brick cracking and falling off and McDowell and Associates has inspected the building for the cause and made their recommendation. Therefore be it resolved that the Mayor and Council authorize Hennessy Engineers Incorporated to prepare the contract documents and solicit bids for the renovation of the Senior Center brick facade. According to the recommendations of McDowell and Associates at a cost not to exceed $3,500. Funds that come from account number 249-043-755201, Senior Center Renovations. So move. Support. Okay. <clears throat> Discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Council Persons Murphy? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Garzinski? Yes. Higgins? Yes. And uh, Mayor Kearns? Yes. Next item also has a cover letter from Doreen Christian. Office of Community Planning and Development. In the background, Mayor and Council adopted a new CDBG budget for fiscal year 2017-18 on March 6, 2017. The funding for street improvements was included in that budget. In order to expedite the process so that construction may be completed this construction season, I am requesting that Hennessy engineers be authorized to prepare the bid documents for the Electric and Russell Avenue intersection project and have authorizations to solicit bids. We went out for bid reconstruction at Electric and O'Connor, Electric Monty, and Electric and Russell last year. However, the budget did not cover the Electric Russell intersection. So we have resolved that Hennessy Engineers is authorized to solicit bids for the Electric Avenue and Russell intersection project. Funds to come from account number 249-043 75519 Streets and Utilities. So moved. Support. Support. Discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Councilperson Kelsey? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Garzinski? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Mayor Kearns? Yes. All right. Next item is resolved that the special event permit number one be approved for McCafferty's Bar to hold a St. Patrick's Day party at 4210 Fort Street, Lincoln Park, Michigan on March 17, 2018, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. under the following conditions. One, tent to be inspected by the fire department prior to use. Two, special event to cease at 11 p.m. per municipal code 666.04. Three, applicants shall be responsible for cleanup of all debris associated with event from surrounding properties. So moved. Support. Question, Your Honor. Yes, sir. I was just, I was just looking. Um, Fees are paid and they're looking, police department's looking for $1,000 for uh, cost recovery. Go ahead, sir. That's part of my question. Uh, I, I noticed the police chief is here. I'm just wondering, last year did things go better than they had in the past and everything is running fully now? Yes, they did. And because we're able to uh, put the cost recovery in, we had additional officers working that night. Great. Would you mind repeating that for the <clears throat> folks at home, sir? Because of the cost recovery that we had added in, Last year, we did the same thing this year. We were able to call extra officers and they specifically patrolled in that area. So it helped quite a bit. In the past, they had reached out to the neighbors to see if there was uh, an issue. Do you think, are they on good relationships with the, the I mean, are they, are they being good neighbors after the event, I guess, last year? Yeah, we didn't get many complaints last year. Okay. All right, further discussion? Court call the roll. Thank you, Chief. Council Person Kelsey? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Garzinski? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Mayor Kearns? Yes. Mm 
Next item we have a unsigned cover letter. Um, I believe that it is from John Kazoo, our director of DPS. And it's authorization, authorize Hennessy engineers to perform construction oversight for Lincoln Pump Station Pump Number One. Hennessy Engineers Incorporated, and this is a background, it's not the motion yet, went out to bid for the Lincoln Pump Station Number One. For repairs, the project was awarded to Northern Pump and Well for a total bid of the amount of $75,688.80, including a 20% contingency. To assist the city in completing this project, Hennessy Engineers has put together a proposal for oversight and construction services of the repairs. Hennessy Engineers is the city's current engineering firm has provided rates for the project that mimic the current engineering contract. So whereas, whereas Hennessy Engineers Incorporated is the city's current engineering firm, be resolved that the Mayor and City Council authorize Hennessy Engineers Incorporated to perform the oversight and construction services for the Lincoln Pump Station Pump Number One repairs for a total cost not to exceed six thousand five hundred forty-one dollars and forty-eight cents, to come from account number five nine two dash five two seven dash eight one eight zero 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 sewer department contractual services. So moved. Support. Discussion. Call the roll. Councilperson Kelsey? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Jarzinski? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Mayor Kearns? Yes. He's not here, so he can't support that. Either. No, can't. Well, okay. Well, then we'll go. Uh, okay. We have, um, whereas the city received the following recommendations from the city's auditing firm as per part of the annual audit. In quotations, the city of Lincoln Park should consider changing or charging appropriate rent for the use for use of the court building to ensure the other two cities are paying their fair share along with the total court costs, end quotation. And whereas the mayor and council desire to charge appropriate rent for the use of the court building by the 25th District Courts so of the cities of E Course and River Rouge are paying their fair share of the total court costs. Now therefore be resolved that the mayor and council direct the city manager to prepare an analysis of the appropriate rent to be charged to the 25th district court for the use of the city-owned court facility and provide this analysis to the mayor and city council at the March 5th, 2018 meeting. Now this has been moved by um, Councilman Kelsey, uh, but our seconding party is not here. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Then we have discussion. You want me to start off, Mayor? Mayor? Or this, whoever, well, back, this. well, I guess it's my motion. Thank yep. you, Councilman Higgins. For, uh, I guess back in 2014, I have a thing here on front of me where when Brad Coulter was our emergency manager, Plant Moran did a study. And out that study, and ever since then, Plant Moran has been recommended that the city take a look at the rent uh, not being charged to the other two cities that are using the course system. That's E-Course and River Rouge. Uh, and that's the reason I brought this up, because um, if and when the court leaves, we're going to be stuck with the building. And the court's going to leave. We all know the court is addressing for better space and so on and so forth. So I'd like us to look at the fact that, A, is there something in that uh, memo we keep getting from Plant Moran talking about why we're not charging a rent? And, B, uh, can that be used if we go forward to, to use that for what's going to happen to that building or to help fix that building? Because right now, we own the building to a certain extent. We repair it, and they reimburse us. But we also pay them $45,000 every so many quarter per an agreement. I was just looking at the bills today. So we pay them, and then they kind of give us X amount of money back. So it's kind of a back-and-forth kind of deal. So what I'd like to see is some more deep diving into this issue, basic is what it is. Okay. Is there, there other discussion? It's something we should take a look at, in my, my opinion. So... We have um, no further discussion, so uh, court call the roll. Councilperson Kelsey? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Jarzinski? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Mayor Kearns? Yes. And next item we have is a resolution to approve the agreement with Great Lakes Recycling, um, do his bu doing business as simple recycling for curbside collection of soft recyclables for city residents. Has a cover letter from uh, city manager, 
Matthew Copler. And it's uh, one of the goals adopted by Mayor and Council was to begin a curbside collection of soft recyclables. You may recall this goal was brought forward by Mayor Carnes during the Mayor and Council's goal setting process. The company that provides this service is Great Lake Recycling. Simple recycling will provide orange bags to each resident for them to place acceptable soft recyclable materials in. And then on the day of the resident's normal trash pickup, they would place the bag at the curbside and simple recycling will pick it up. They provide the service at no cost to the city or the residents. In fact, they will pay the city a pound or a penny for each pound of the recyclables that are not collected. Besides not costing the city any money to implement, the city will make an additional revenue and reduce the tipping fees that the city pays for disposal of rubbish at the Riverview landfill. Accordingly to the EPA, textiles account for about 9% of the materials that make up the municipal solid waste stream. If this data point held for Lincoln Park's waste system, then our residents are discarding into the MSW stream over 1,422 tons of textiles costing the city approximately 25000 per year. The same tonnage diverted to this program would uh, produce a revenue of about $28,000 per year. These numbers are highly speculative since the actual ton is not known or the potential recycling rate for the city known. It is fair to say, however, that if used, this program would reduce the city's cost of operation. So we have resolutions, whereas Mayor Thomas E. Carnes proposed as part of the Mayor and Council goals adopted in 2017 to provide to city residents curbside collection of soft recyclables at no cost to the city or to the residents for the collection. And whereas Great Lakes Recycling Incorporated, doing business <coughs> as Simple Recycling, provides said services and will pay the city one cent per pound of gross receipt of soft recyclables. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council approve this, the agreement with Great Lakes Recycling Incorporated, doing business as Simple Recycling for curbside collection of soft recyclables for a term of three years with the mutual option to renew for an additional period of three years and be it further resolved that the mayor and city clerk are authorized to execute this agreement on the behalf of the city of Lincoln Park. Can I move on this? Support. Support. Discussion? Is this to the chair? Yes, sir. Uh, is this going to be voluntary? Is that what we're going to start out with and see how it yes. works? Okay. That was the only question because some people were at that's That's fine. What we're talking about with, with textiles are uh, clothing, dresses, coats, shoes, eyeglasses, um, purses. You got old tennis shoes. Yeah, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, items that are acceptable for simple recycling, men's clothing, children's clothing, women's clothing, boots, shoes, bedding, belts and ties, books, bras, coats and jackets, fashion accessibles, handbags and purses, hats and gloves, kitchenware, linens, pillows, sandals and slippers, socks, stuffed animals, table linen, tools, towels, toys, mm -hmm. undergarments. The only, they cannot collect appliances, furniture, tires, paint, carpeting, mattresses, traditional recyclables, metal glass paper, and hazardous, hazardous waste. So is there Discussion? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just a couple comments. Okay, identify yourself first, please. My name is Lillian Ross, okay. and I'm a resident. And my question is, I know that, that um, the residents have voted down recycling before, and I know that's because we would have to pay for it. That's, this, not, that's not correct. No? No. Okay. Well... <laughs> In this case, I know we're not paying for it. That's correct. Okay. But in order to get the maximum um, participation is what I'm looking um, to see. Do, do we know where we're going to allocate the monies generated? Because in, in my past experience, the reason I bring this up is because in my past experience, if you tell people where the money is going, then they're, they're more apt to... Um, participate well in the perfect world and as I vision this covering this money coming in would help to defer the cost of the traditional recycling which I hope to bring forward in um, July as part of the bid when we go out for um, 
the waste management or, yeah, for our, our trash collection. So you're saying traditional recycling as in the newspaper, plastic, Containers glass. and yeah, the bottles and, and things such as we had. Lincoln Park had a recycling program uh, some years, years ago. Years ago, right. There was a vote by mayor and council to, to rescind that. Um, in my opinion, that was not a proper vote because you cannot change an ordinance just by a vote of a single vote of mayor and council. So that is why we're looking to bring that, that back. And this would help, one, to reduce our costs in the amount of trash that is collected, that that goes to the, to the landfill. And then right. two, it, I think it's the right thing to do for our community, and then we get a little bit of cash back in the process. But where the amount of money would go would be determined once we figure out what is going to be, be coming in. Okay. But you're looking to to go back to the traditional recycling and use this money for that? It's a possibility. It's a yeah. possibility. Okay. With that, I have another thought, and if I, if I may ask, I remember, I could be wrong, but I remember a while back that um, it was discussed that the trash collection um, fees, that the residents overpaid on that. Ms. Ross? Yes. I can only allow comments at this time about this specific item, whether we are going to allow this or not allow the, the soft recycling. During, but, during citizen communications, you'll okay. be allowed to do that. But it has okay. to, at this point, it's specifically what is on the, uh, the, on the table right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I I had a question, too. I, I think this program is going to save us some money, and I think it's a good idea. But I think what the lady is, is referring to is we had talked about the fact that the city had overbilled people for trash collection in the past, and we had talked about up here using that overbilling as a subsidy to pay for a recycling program instead of giving the money back to the people who paid it. And I think maybe that's where the confusion is coming in. And, uh, you know, you can address that, you know, at the end of the meeting. But uh, that's a subject that we haven't really cleared up yet. Working on it. Further discussion? Clerk, hold the roll. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Councilperson Darzinski? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. And Murphy? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Next item that we have... Um, is resolved that accounts and claims payable for those items greater than $25,000 be approved as follows. 25th District Court, to February 2018, $45,946. DTE Energy Streetlights, December 2017, $47,323.32. GFL Environmental Residential Curbside Collection, January 18. 2018, $109,388.02. MERS, December 2017, defined benefit, $303,104.01. Plato Law Firm, September slash October 2017 legal fees, $26,659.03. Pullman SST Incorporated, retention basin project payment two and three. $242,975.32. Wayne County, December 2017, sewage usage fee, $95,649.81. Wayne County, July to December 2017, prisoner housing, $55,825. City Wyandotte, October to December 2017, Downriver Dispatch, $68,750.43. Discussion? And the clerk call the roll. Council Persons Murphy? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Darzinski? Yes. Higgins? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Then we will move on to the city manager's report. Mr. Copper? Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I just had a few items to run over really quick with you. Uh, first, uh, I placed at your desk a couple uh, items 
Uh, first one is kind of a heads up to uh, remind you that we have entered the budget season. And so I provided you kind of a, a broad overview of uh, the upcoming schedule for the budget. Um, you will be getting a uh, recommended proposed budget uh, from me uh, by March 19th of this year. And uh, at that point in time, we'll take up what uh, your uh, contemplation of that budget is, is going to look like in terms of uh, different meetings. So. So it's coming. We're working on it right now to get it to you. The uh, second item I handed out is uh, something that uh, was put out uh, by uh, Great Lakes Water Authority for uh, what they call their RAP program. And uh, this may sound familiar because last year uh, you did take up the, the consideration of whether you wanted to enter this program. Uh, the program has changed since uh, we last spoke about it. And so uh, because of that, we have uh, gotten some input from residents asking why we're not a part of this. And also, uh, I was visited by uh, the uh, Wayne Metro uh, agency that uh, oversees it for our area and uh, wanted to bring to our attention that it has changed. Uh, you might remember last time uh, we had, if we entered into the program, we would have to forgive all the... Uh, all the uh, penalties that go along with that, as well as we couldn't uh, place that onto uh, their uh, property, ta property taxes as a lien if they didn't pay it. Um, the other part of, of this was their reporting requirements ask of the city were quite extensive, and it was going to take a lot of uh, staff time to kind of manipulate the, uh, the reports that had to uh, happen. Uh, as you can see here, now they actually offer three different options. Uh, the option two is one that if, if we were interested in it, it would probably be what we'd be looking at, at doing. Um, but in option two, uh, you still can place uh, the, a lien on the taxes if they don't pay that. Uh, you still have to forgive the, uh, the penalties associated with it. But I think if, if there's any desire uh, for council to consider that, that would be the option. I bring it to your attention today because uh, Wayne Metro would like to uh, address the mayor and council, come in and do a quick presentation and go over this and discuss whether you'd like to go forward with that. If, if there isn't any uh, desire to revisit that, rather than waste your time and, and the agency's time, I'd be able to, to let them know that. So I don't know if you want to give a quick thumbs up or thumbs down consensus to bring them in, listen to them, or not. Well, it basically, it would save some of our residents who are having difficulty paying it some amount of, of money. Well, I, I think it, it does a couple things. It, you know, and, and you probably remember this. Uh, there is an infusion of, of money from this program into our, our bank because we get money that isn't being paid right now. You know, it's, I think it's at the time was up to seven hundred dollars. Um, I think it may go up a little. Oh no, it's still up to seven hundred dollars per year. So it kind of catches people up. The trade-off is to be able to be that we have to relieve them of any of the, the the penalties and fines that are associated with them being behind. Which you know there is a penalty and interest that that accumulate. Um, so it, it does help the resident by catching them up at least $700 worth. The other thing is to be a part of the program, they have to make monthly payments. So we would be seeing actually you know, money a little bit quicker than what we normally would be seeing uh, from them. They get a little bit of money again. I think it's, uh, I can't remember exactly what, what they get offhand here. I can't read it that quickly. But they do get a little bit of money every month as well to help make those payments, but they have to stay current with the city to do that. So there is a benefit to us. The loss is that, that you know, we would have to waive those those penalties and, and fines. I don't see where it would hurt us to listen to what they had to say with it and to and see if there's <laughs> if we're going to benefit or if our citizens are going to benefit or if it's going to cost us money. It's not going to be something that we can afford to do, but right. I'd be interested in listening to them. How does everybody else feel? Well, sounds, sounds I'd be good. interested in talking yeah, to them. Yeah, interesting here. I don't have a problem with that. I'd like to see, though, that uh, through the chair, that the, if the city manager could, before we have the meeting or the presentation by Wayne Metro, 
maybe an idea where we stand with some of these people that are so we have an idea what if we get into it what we're talking about currently right now in other words some facts and figures about you know how the premium program's going if there's a lot of people that are behind if they're doing good if they go on a payment program and so on and so forth so we have a kind of a a snapshot when we talk to Wayne Metro about sure. some figures, if that's sure. okay. Yep, we can do that. I'd like to also to hear from some of our neighbors or if just sure. generally how it's working out for them. I think Southgate's participating, Allen Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a number of Maybe if, if Matt could elaborate a little bit on the on the assessment that you were talking about. Uh, are you talking about assessment on the property of our residents or yeah, so if if you don't meet your payments and it's at the right time of the year, what what is owed the city will be placed on your taxes. So, you know, in, in some cases, if if they're not paying their taxes, you know, we're not going to see that money for three years anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, this is one way to reduce that tax burden, ultimate tax burden, and hopefully, you know, have multiple effects on, on the resident. So they can maybe stay current with their taxes as well. Okay. So okay, I will coordinate that with the representative from Wayne Metro. You're talking about coming in and just having a, a part of a general meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We won't have any resolutions or anything. It's just because again, I think you know, I didn't know if you wanted to hear again. I know the program's changed. I think it's at least you know worth listening to to see if it's something like I said we we have had residents inquire about this so um, also at the next meeting on the 20th um, I'm trying to coordinate with HP Snapdown River and so that's the uh, the company that purchased the uh, foreclosed properties that we purchased from the county um, been working on with them to get some updates and I'd like them to come in and talk to you about, you know, where they stand and provide maybe some pictures of what they've been doing. Uh, I, I was able to uh, look at a few of the houses that, that they have renovated, are close to getting uh, one I think is ready to be sold, um, and two are going to be listed if they haven't already been listed. But uh, I think, uh, you know, it's been a little bit over six months now, or right around six months. So I think it's uh, a good opportunity for them to come in and talk to you and update you on what their performance has been. Your Honor, could we do that as, as we do with our department heads? Do we have a department head type report from them to, to give us an, an overlay of everything that's happening? Well, I don't see why, why not. I mean, I mean, it would be nicer, I think, if we were able to do it on TV where everybody yeah. could see. Yeah, and I, changes. Oh, yeah. you know, I, and my thinking knows that we could uh, <clears throat> talk with the mayor, and I haven't done this yet, but my thought was talk with the mayor and see if he would want to handle that under his report, his remarks, where it could be handled under mine. But, but again, I think, you know, they're, they're going to have, a, you know, presentation on, you know, what, what the homes look like before and after as well. Well, this is a good thing for the city, and I, I really wanted the residents to be able to yep. see the goodness that we're producing here. Yep, definitely. And if they could have... Um, Audiovisual as part of yep. that. Yep. that would, I mean, that would help. Yes, definitely. That's that's what uh, again, looking at uh, through the homes that they've renovated. I mean, there is a difference between before and after. So, uh, the last thing, um, just wanted to uh, let you know, and you'll be receiving uh, save the date for this. But uh, the state of the city uh, is being scheduled for March fourteenth, twenty eighteen. And uh, although we haven't confirmed the time yet with uh, all the individuals, we're probably looking at a start of around 6.30, 7 o'clock. High school auditorium. Good question. Thank you. And that's where it's going to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any questions for me, I am open to answering those. You mentioned um, financing for the um, historical museum that we had talked about having a, a presentation or a special meeting for oh, that. That's, that's that was right. one of my questions. Yes, that's. I'm glad you brought that. Yes. Uh, the mayor had asked that we have a special meeting prior to the March 5th. Is it March 5th, I think? The first meeting in March. Yeah, yeah. the first meeting in March. And uh, have representatives from the, uh, the uh, historical society there as well and, and talk about different ways the city can help fund uh, that particular asset within our community. You might, you might know today there's about, I think, $17,000 is being provided to the, the museum uh, from the DDA. 
And uh, I think there's some ideas that, that we have that make sense that, you know, the city can do um, to help alleviate the DDA's commitment but still provide uh, a commitment to the, the museum to keep that asset open and, and operating. Other question I had, uh, Matt, was on our goals. You were yes. going to give us an update as to how they were progressing. Yep. I know we we did the mayor's one of the mayors tonight, but yep. I would like to see, the, you know, a fruition of this whole project. And, and you know, I and and I was trying to update because I was looking for the end of the year to do that, but we've made some gains. Actually, on you know, one of the gains was on yours as well as uh, Councilman Kelsey's. Um, and I just haven't had a chance to update that. And I was thinking about that tonight because I knew we were talking about the mayors, that that question might come up. So I will uh, do it, uh, plan on doing it at the March meeting if it's okay, because I know uh, some council members won't be available at the next meeting. Um, so I'll try it for the March meeting. Question to the chair, if I might. Yes, sir. Back to the museum. Uh, I understand that the DDA is just not going to fund them at all. Is that true? In other words, they've decided to notify the historical or the Historical Commission that controls the museum or part of the museum, whatever, that they've decided that they can't do that anymore. So it's not so much, well, they're going to do it. They're not. They're saying it's time for the, because there was a mention about maybe 50. It doesn't sound that. Maybe I'm yeah. wrong. That's why I asked so the I, question. I, yeah, I, I, well, I wouldn't care. Right. On, the, on the DDA, it, it's been, I think it's four or five years now that it's been full funding right. for that and keeping the museum operated. It is in the DDA area, and it's extremely important important that for that but um, at this point uh, the DDA can't continue to right. fund it completely uh, it's not saying that there won't be assistance oh, or okay. and I'm going to ask that the uh, DDA representatives be at this also because there's there's different things out there that that could be either uh, partial funding from um, the society the city and the DDA or there's all kinds of different options that we're going to explore it's not that the, the DDA doesn't care for the museum no, it anymore. It's just that the taxes that are captured and, and used for that um, should go to uh, <laughs> other things that they're that they're responsible for. But well, that was my, Your Honor. I think you said it right, Your Honor, at the end there. That's why I was confused when there was. That's. It's better to have everybody in the same room. We can talk about. Oh, yeah. That's what I was I think I agree with you. I think the uh, historical commission uh, is a, a vital concern to the to the city. Uh, is there a way do you think that we could maybe uh, wean them off of it? In other words, they would pay uh, a little bit less each year, and uh, we could take over more and more responsibility. There's always a possibility. That part hasn't <laughs> been that hasn't been discussed, and so I think that that's the the whole purpose of this. Okay. Of this meeting is to uh, look at all sides because I think that all of us can agree that the the museum is an important part of our of our city. We are fortunate that I think that we have the best downriver. I'll, I'd put it up against others in the state too. But. I agree. <laughs> so you need a, a resolution for that. Well, actually, I was since we. We're going to do that the first meeting in March. I was going to bring that resolution next uh, meeting. The next meeting. So. Okay, very good. Anything further for the city manager? Thank you. Then we will go to a department head report. We have the police department today. Chief Raymond Waters, Chief. I want to give you an update on the police department from our, my last uh, visit here, which was in October of 17, on our road patrol, our detective bureau, our SCAT unit, ordinance, pride, records, some of the training we've done, our school resource officers, and our community policing program. Our road uh, patrol currently consists of 26 full-time uniform officers. Since October of 17, road has taken 14,167 calls of service and they've made 100 or 1,600 arrests, issued 3,100 violations. They've continued to dedicate their lives to the city of Lincoln Park. And our SEP program has continued to be a helpful tool for the police department. Officers have issued an additional 4,240 violations outside their shift work and have made an additional 186 arrests. We continue to use those set officers and cars to target some of our hot zone areas that have been selected from our ComStat research. 
This extra patrol and effort of traffic enforcement has helped reduce some of the crime in the hotspot areas within the city. In December, between the 18th and the 31st, the Road Patrol participated in Operation Blue Light 7. Over 60 agencies within the state worked together to deter crime and prevent dangerous driving during the holiday season. During this operation, Lincoln Park officers stopped 390 cars and issued 328 violations, impounded 56 cars, and conducted 58 arrests. Our detective bureau is cu currently consist of three patrol officers and one lieutenant. The detectives investigated 486 complaints since October, including numerous burglaries, assaults, larcenies, juvenile complaints, and death investigations. They've closed and so or solved 416 of the 486 complaints. One of the uh, recent complaints that they had was involved a robbery of a business. Uh, the detectives obtained surveillance video footage of the incident, immediately shared it with other neighborhood communities, and it was later determined that the same suspect had committed numerous crimes in other cities. Lincoln Park detectives worked closely with other neighboring communities to identify the suspect, and it was uh, an incident where the FBI ended up taking over the complaint and uh, ended up charging this suspect. So they did a very good job uh, uh, sharing information with some of the other communities and uh, um, some of the work that they uh, do every day. Our school resource officer is uh, Sergeant Hammerly, assigned to the high school, and Detective Kerr to the middle school. Officers handle complaints involving the students and are responsible for assisting the school staff with any problems that occur. This may include discipline issues or even traffic problems. Uh, recently, Sergeant Hammerly, with the assistance of Sergeant Mueller, recently spoke to a classroom at the school about internet, internet safety. Officers explained the do's and don'ts of social media and some of the problems that could arise from it. Uh, the response still continues to be very positive with both officers at both schools. Our SCAT unit has continued to be a great asset to the department in the city of Lincoln Park. They focused on stopping narcotic prostitution, gambling, and other illegal activity. Uh, they investigated 145 complaints since the last update in October. They've pushed off or seized approximately 70 vehicles, which is approximately $52,500 that we will receive from the county from those seizures and have seized $22,828 in cash um, during uh, um, some of their operations. They've also issued over 150 violations, 80 arrests, and served numerous search warrants uh, within the city since October. Our Pride Department, our ordinance officers, continue to investigate and enforce the blight within the city and handle our animal control issues. Since October, the ordinance officers have issued 1,363 violations and investigated 1,294 complaints. Records Bureau consists of one full-time and three part-time employees. Uh, they reviewed over 16,759 electronic records, which is crash reports, citations, live scans, and reports. Since October, this process, uh, this is all since uh, October, and this process is important because 15% of all arrests are modified after the fact. That means charges need to be uh, changed in the computer system for crime stat reasons after investigations. Sometimes things change, they're more severe or they're lost sometimes. And that's what uh, records ends up going back and making modifications. The total volume of electronic records in comparison with 2017 uh, from just uh, 2015 was an increase of 25% with the same amount of uh, clerical staffing hours. Uh, since the last update, records has collected and processed $15,832 in booking fees, $90 PBT <coughs> fees, and $950 in sex offender fees. Some of the recent training we've had since October, Detective Nicholas uh, attended the Reed Interview School. This is a widely recognized uh, as one of the best interview schools that's offered. Detective Hancock, Hancock attended a, a child sexual assault investigation school that was in Southgate. Uh, Detective Sampson attended a death investigation school hosted by the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office in Detroit. And in October, the department qualified at the Taylor Outdoor Range. Officers qualified with both handguns and rifle. And in November, officers qualified with our FAT, the FAT system, which is a firearms training simulator. Uh, this training simulator provides officers with shoot, don't shoot training scenarios. Uh, city manager and um, some of the council, uh, Councilman Kelsey came in to check it out, and uh, Mayor Carnes also gave it a shot this time. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it gives officers a great um, tool of training on um, whether they should shoot or don't shoot. It's just good training to keep in the back of their mind when they come into some of these more serious scenes. 
On the 28th of uh, November, the department started our active shooting, shooting training. Each officer had an opportunity to complete this training with the Down River SWAT team. Uh, this training continued through January. Uh, we, we just finished it up last week. It was very good training. It was done in a um, school um, uh, that was abandoned at Taylor. The SWAT team put it on, and um, it was about a four-hour training. It, uh, it was very good. We plan on doing it again next year, try to do it every year. Did all of our officers take part? All but I think we missed out on three of them, all but three. That's pretty good. Well. Uh, Lieutenant Klockovich and Te Detective Stearns attended a taser research train to trainer class. This will allow both of them to recertify everyone in the department, uh, which is important because every officer that carries a taser must recertify every year. And the department's been using online training with Police One every month. Officers are each assigned a course of review. Uh, we've logged in 900 hours of training in 2017, which is, uh, saves the department um, extra money of sending somebody out to an actual school and training where they can come in, start a, a class, and then if they get sent on a call, they can leave, and then they can come pick back up on it when they, get, when they have uh, time. Our community, police, community policing program has continued to build a better relationship between the public and the police department. Sergeant Mueller has been part of numerous community events over the past several months. In October, several Lincoln Park officers, with the help of Mayor Carnes, worked at McDonald's at uh, 2106 Dix for a McPolice night. Officers worked from 4 to 7, and during that time, McDonald's donated 20% of the proceeds to our community policing program. On December 5th, 7th, and 19th, the police department hosted Shop with a Hero at Meyer. Officers shopped with 32 children with the assistance of Meyer. The children received numerous gifts and a holiday dinner. On the 11th the police department of December, the police department hosted a Shop with a Hero at Target in Allen Park. Officers shopped with 13 more t children uh, with the help of Target, and they all received numerous gifts. Uh, this year, between Meyer and Target, we were able to shop with uh, 45 children, which was... Uh, a little bit higher than last year. We'd like to even increase that next year. On December 15th, the police department teamed up with Secret Santa and handed out $100 bills to those in need. Secret Santa and the uh, police department handed out approximately $14,000 in $100 bills. On December 27th, the police department hosted the Cops Care Skate Tate at Ice Arena. Officers skated, played games with neighborhood children. Uh, we gave away several bikes and provided lunch for the kids. Just a question, Chief, when you're talking about the COPS care program, most of the officers are doing this on their own time, right, as volunteers? That's correct, yeah. They did, like earlier in, uh, um, tonight when Officer Belknap was, received uh, his award, he's one of the officers that comes in uh, all the time on his time off. And when he comes in on his time off, he also brings his family with him. So that's <clears throat> kind of been um, uh, which. Uh, one of the reasons why we felt strongly about him getting this award, he's kind of spread that around. It's contagious now. So now all the guys kind of feel like this is it's the right thing to do. They're taking some pride in the department and within the city. So it's a nice thing to see. So it's safe to say hundreds of hours of volunteer time from the officers each year? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Our Comstat, we still continue to work with Dr. Martin from Wayne State University. Uh, we use the crime mapping to stop and prevent crime in the city. Uh, the, police, the police department has continued to target those high crime areas from the CompStat. Um, in the morning, roll call will bring up the CompStat map of the city of Lincoln Park. Um, this will be a map, a typical map that we would pull up. This has been the last 30 days. If you notice, there's different icons on the map. Each, each ship uh, supervisor will log in and be able to uh, rotate the mouse to each one of those icons and pull up what crime that is. If you notice, some of them, you know, they're all different. We have abandoned vehicles. We have some assaults, some larcenies, uh, some robberies, and different things like that. Uh, when we limit it down to just the last couple of days, it's a little bit easier to see specific areas that were hit that we pay attention to if some watch some of the recent trends. Some of the council resolutions that we've brought to you that we want to update you on the results or, or, or what's been going on since you've approved is Sergeant Coulter will be attending Eastern Michigan Staff and Command School this month. It should be a month. The police department requested to send two officers, but because the school is in such high demand this year, we're only able to send one. Uh, the new patrol cars that we ordered, the 2018 Ford Explorers, have been ordered, and unfortunately 
Ford won't give us a timetable on when they'll be delivered, but as soon as we have an idea, we'll let you know. Uh, the new roof and heating and cooling system that was installed wasn't necessarily requested by the police department, but it obviously went to the police department. It's been installed, and we are still working out some of the uh, bugs for the roof, but uh, it's definitely an improvement. Officer Nicholas, like I had said earlier, had completed the Reed interview school. And both, as you know, t after this tonight, Officer Harris and Parker both completed the canine training, and both dogs are currently on the road. Uh, another note, too, with Harris and Parker and the family that came in tonight, that family provided the money so that we could purchase one of the dogs, and not only the dog, but the training for the year, too. So it's quite a... Um, um, contribution that they've made to our canine department and then Friday they um, bought each one of the uh, canine handlers a buddy bag which it's a, a large duffel bag full of uh, first aid equipment for the dog if the dog were to get sick or injured uh, it's approximately between 400 and uh, 500 dollars for each bag and they bought each one of them a bag and they're also purchasing them each a vest for the dogs so um, we're, we're ha very happy and fortunate that uh, the Miller family has uh, been able to help us with our program. Moving forward, we're in the process of accepting applications for probationary officer. We currently have a shortage because of a recent retirement of uh, Sergeant Mandel. And we will be con we'll continue to explore avenues to reduce the crime and look to reduce the cost to the city. And that's all I have for you. Chief, what does SCAT stand for again? Street Crime Arrest Team. Thank you. I have to say that uh, your tenure at Chief, you've done a great job. You, Deputy Chief Lavis, and all your men and women underneath you uh, are doing a great job for us. We appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else for the Chief? Is there a chair? Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, I just want to let you know um, I live over on Seacott and Chandler, and um, the uh, the units that have been um, on the road patrol units have been um, um, sitting um, outside my house and across the street to kind of take care of the you know, the cars that think that that's a NASCAR circuit there, and that definitely made a difference um, this um, during the last fall and, and into the winter. So it's um, it's much appreciated and it is noticed. Thank you. Good, and I encourage anyone that has an issue with traffic that if if there's a problem, you know. We can't be everywhere, and, and there's there are times where there's a problem that we're just not aware of it. We're not ignoring it, but we're just not aware of it. So if there is a traffic issue or anyone has any type of complaint, to let us know, they can email me or leave a message for me, and we'll address it as soon as we can. For the chair, if yes, I sir. Uh, congratulations! I've been to a couple of the events and stuff like that, and the training thing. <laughs> very impressive. I'm very. I mean, <clears throat> you've come a long way with the. Community, in, <clears throat> excuse me, community involvement and the training and all that, and uh, I'm, you know, if a lot of people should start looking at some of that stuff and stopping by, <clears throat> excuse me, and seeing what you guys do uh, and ladies do. I mean, it's very, very impressive. I was uh, always impressed in going to those different functions and that. And good news for you and the uh, men and women to put it on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we're gonna we have a couple of new things, exciting things that'll be coming up. Um, we're hoping in the fall to do a citizens academy, which will be something new for us and. Uh, we're, we're hoping that that takes off. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Thank you. Then we'll move on to uh, citizen communications. After the Chief takes care of his IT issues. <laughs> That was nice to be able to have the presentation up on the screen. And for those probably watching at home and those that uh, view it online later on, to get a better feel for what goes on. We're going to charge you rent soon. Though. <laughs> All set. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, anyone for citizen communications? Oh, yeah. Just feel free. So just to go back to the trash collection fee yes. overcharge, um, are we going, the citizens going to be refunded? 
So actually, as part of uh, this year's budget, you may recall you approved a reduction in the uh, trash rate. And so that took us back down to the amount that the auditor said that we should be keeping in that particular fund. So it's, yeah, you've already given it back to the residents. You've, in other words, you've cut. lowered the rate? Correct. In a rate cut. Yeah. So can we expect that with if the recycling program, the simple recycling is successful? Because that, that too will reduce the, the amount that goes to landfill? Yeah, I think, you know, the money that any revenue that would be derived from that would go back into that particular fund. And again, as long as we meet the requirements that the auditors say we should have in there, that gives the mayor and council that opportunity to either refund that back or apply it towards uh, reducing down the cost. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Council. Okay. Anyone else? I'm saying none. We'll move on to oral reports of the Mayor and Council. Council President Murphy. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to just spend a few minutes uh, tonight uh, and pass out some congratulations and some thank yous. Uh, in the last year, we have uh, lost a councilman in the city of Lincoln Park, Councilman DeSanto, and uh, we have been looking for someone to step up and replace Councilman DeSanto, and I want to thank uh, we were notified by uh, Donna Breeding that uh, we have four people who are going to be running for that spot uh, on March, or excuse me, on May the 8th in the election. I want to thank them for stepping up to the plate and uh, taking on that responsibility. It's uh, something very needed in the city of Lincoln Park. We would like to have a full council so that we, when we deliberate, uh, we have a full understanding of what's going on. Uh, the people that... Uh, signed up uh, according to the the note i got from uh donna was uh carlos and the last name is Sel Salcido. okay he's here tonight uh sean stansbury is here he's been here many times uh vicky uh very your i don't know how to pronounce that name uh real well but it's ricky and uh then mrs ross who was just up here lillian ross They've all stepped up to the plate and decided that they're going to help our city out. So I hope that you will take the time to get out and vote <coughs> on that one special day. That's Again, that's May the 8th. Uh, I'm also hoping that we're going to set aside, like we do for the rest of the council, uh, five minutes of uh, TV time so they'll have a chance to get up and uh, sit here and tell you what they're all about. I'm also encouraging the, the News Herald newspapers to send out their traditional uh, questionnaire which will give you an idea of what they're thinking about and what they want to do for the city and uh, hopefully that's going to happen if we put all these things together we'll understand uh, what these four people are all about and you'll have a better chance to decide who's going to fill that empty spot there that's all I have here thank you sir Councilman Higgins thank you your honor um, first I'd like to uh, go lend my congratulations for the Jack Frost Jamboree. The Recreation Department did a wonderful job, and uh, I just want to congratulate them on that. Um, since we talked so much about the recycling tonight, I would like to remind everybody uh, we do have a recycling bin behind the library, um, and anything that goes into the recycling bin, that them funds that we get from that go back to the library. So that is a very good cause, um, and I'd encourage people to use that. Um, another thing that came up was our uh, agenda that we had set earlier this year for the mayor and council. Uh, mayor, um, my colleague, uh, Mr. Murphy, brought this up. Uh, I'd let you know that our Maya thing, the business expo, will be April 21st, okay? Um, and it will be at the Lincoln Park Band Show. Uh, businesses should uh, be getting things in the mail within the month um, to let them know what our plans are and what we're, where we're going with that. Um, uh, March is almost upon us, and I'd like to remind everybody about the All Day Jam. Um, the All Day Jam is uh, bands from 12 to midnight, and uh, we're going to do something a little different this year. We're going to have a kids' and afternoon where they can do some crafts, um, and then 
the, the uh, more stronger bands, I'll say, later on in the evening for the adults. Um, and all that money will go to help pay for our parade. So I'll remind everybody, March 24th, be there at the VFW. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for tonight, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Councilman Kelsey. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, piggyback a little bit what Council Murphy said. Uh, I'd like to see more people come out and vote. That's another issue we've had in this city is that we, we have candidates that run, and we do all, like you explained, uh, Councilman, about making sure that residents know as much as possible in that, and then we get 3% or 6% or 9%. And that's not a real true reflection of the city. And I think that needs to, people, you know, have a tendency to think that somebody else is going to take care of their business. Well, they're responsible, too, as citizens to at least vote for somebody. So I would hope the vote count goes a little, at least to uh, increase a little bit, especially in off-year election, which is in May compared to November we normally have. Um, one other issue is I went to the, uh, uh, stopped by myself, my wife and myself at the uh, Jack Krause Jam Marine. It was nice. I enjoyed that. They had... Uh, uh, council, or councilman, uh, Representative Dingle was there uh, from uh, our district, and you had uh, Kara Clemente, which is our representative, was there. Uh, Maureen was there to put it on. You had a good group there. The mayor was there. You had a lot of people that were there, not as much as we should have. We put a lot of stuff on in this city for our residents and for people to come in and see our city. And I think the residents need to at least give it a chance to walk through some of these avenues we put together. These people put a lot of hard work into this stuff and do a lot of stuff to, to put these things on. And I think the residents at least should give a little concern to at least stop them by and saying hi or at least walk them through. I mean, that, that's just my opinion on that. I mean, the more things we do for the residents, uh, the more things that I'd like to see the residents come out and, and support those issues. Um, the last thing I'd like to talk about is that the fact that uh, we discussed a lot of issues here tonight, and, and uh, one of them was the fact about the issue of the uh, uh, recycling. I think that's important because as we go along through uh, the way things are going with cost factors and all that stuff, everything we can turn to reduce the uh, cost that it costs us to do business is great. Because no matter what we do, costs still go up. I don't care if we save a thousand, we spend five hundred because they raise the rates. But if we can go and do some things that at least help out to to keep us even or catch up as they used to say in the business it's the best we can do so i think residents need to understand is it won't cure all the ills putting the money back in but it'll kill some of the ills and i think that's the important part is to do as much as possible as we can to help mitigate some of the rising expenses that we have in the city thank you your honor thanks sir councilman darzinski thank you your honor um yeah um just so everybody knows um the amount of time that goes into something like the Jack Frost Jamboree, that's that the work on that starts about four months before the event. As um, I, I was a vendor there, so I know. And um, and um, <clears throat> so Marine Tobin and Parks and Rec starts on that about four months in advance. And I think I'm actually um, cutting that off. Um, um, it's probably even five months in advance. And um, Marines already um, was taking. Um, vendors fees and working on art in the park which is the last weekend in july so just to so everybody understands how much ramp up time goes into these events um speaking of ramp up time um fantasy land for 2018 is rapidly approaching and i and i mean that in all seriousness the lincoln park chamber of commerce is looking for a community partner um um, a community group that would have enough people to help them run the event. So please get a hold of Lincoln Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, putting on Fantasyland is a, it, it is a Herculean task, to say the least. And um, of, of our three crown jewels in the city, I mean Fantasyland. That's I mean it, it, it's almost unique. It's almost unique within the nation for for a city of this size to put on something of that caliber for so many decades. So if there's um, a community group out there within the sound of my voice, please get a hold of the Lincoln Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, Penny Drop 2019. I'm looking at a budget of about $1,000 and or maybe even $1,200 just for the basic expenses of putting that together. So I'm, I'm looking for someone to partner with me um, that I can start handing this event off to and, and, and make and so that I'm not completely at the center of it and um, 
um, a, a couple or a person that wants to be in charge of making that event um, the one thing they do for the city. Um, my um, my commitment to these things is always forthright, and I'll put it right out there. Um, I will be covering part of the cost of the um, of the hall rental at VFW. So, so my personal financial commitment is going to be about six hundred dollars this year. Just I I don't say that to pat myself on the back. I just say that so the residents know that you know I have real skin in this game when it comes to putting on these events. Okay, page one. Okay, all day jam as Councilman Higgins um, um, was um, started to talk about. The uh, noon to four p.m. is going to be geared towards our fam our family fun time, and um, what we're looking for is um, um, to put on a very a very special four hours that are geared towards families, young families. So if you've got kids twelve or under. Um, this is going to be two adults and, and, and up to three kids will we'll be a family, and however you want to put that together, any two adults and any three kids, um, and that's twenty. it'll be $25. The first thing you get at noon, the first 25 families through the door will get a free door pass, a free family door pass to the Down River Comic Book Convention. So if you want the first fi um, 25 families to show up, you get a free door pass to another city event. And then the kids will be making their own little police shields and, um, and other things. And um, um, J um, Sergeant Jeffrey Mueller will be giving a stranger danger and um, a, a talk, a presentation on police as your friends. And then all the kids will be sworn in after they get their little certificate as part of the Matthew Bowens Kids Brigade. And Matthew Bowen Bowens is, of course, the... Uh, um, the uh, Detroit police officer, son of uh, Jim Bowens, who was uh, gunned down back um, 14, 14 years ago now. And um, this, this event is to salute and remember him and his service. And, of course, the proceeds go to the Memorial Day Parade. Um, um, Sunshine the Clown will be there for the kids. Um, Detroit, retired Detroit uh, police sergeant um, Robert Haig, I met him about two years ago. Um, at a street fair, and he um, writes um, kids' books. Um, he's uh, he's he's a really wonderful guy. He has agreed to um, to um, come to the event, and he'll be selling his kids' books. So um, you want to meet this guy and um, and talk to him. He is um, he's he's an interesting fellow. Um, we got a few other surprises. It's all on it's all on the Hands of the City website, and um, I'm sure you've seen that on social media. Uh, so it's. All you can eat food, check out the raffle baskets, the clown, crafts, presentation by Sergeant Mueller, so a lot of family fun time. The uh, bands will start at 4 o'clock and will rock and roll all the way to midnight. And um, as far as donations to, um, to help defray the cost of the all-day jam, um, if anyone out there wants to make a raffle basket of any kind, any type of raffle item, just show up about 10, 10, 11 a.m. on Saturday, March 24th, and drop it off. So if you want to put that on your calendar. Um, food donations of every kind, um, just get a hold of me on that so I can plan um, plan a calendar and, um, and a, a time schedule of um, when we would need food, do food donations, but food donations of any kind. Um, okay, I think that pretty much takes care of that. Okay. All right. Um, oh, yeah. I um, forgot. From 4 p.m. to midnight um, at the Old Age Jam, we will be giving away 75 free door passes to the Down River Comic Book Convention um, for adults. So, so 75 adults that attend the uh, Old Age Jam from 4 to midnight will get a free door pass to the Down River Comic Convention. So more reasons to show up. This Friday, I attended the um, overall comprehensive um, presentation of DUA, the Down River Utility Wastewater Authority. Um, it went it was a good overview of pretty much everything we've heard before and a lot of a few new things um, and um, what the time frame is. The original time frame was to finish up DUA and for the cities, the member cities to vote on it and uh, for us to hopefully take um, final 
transfer of, of this um, facility um, that was scheduled for July 1st. It's been pushed back to October. I find that extremely disappointing. I, I understand the complexities of, of these larger things. I, I honestly do. Um, I would hope that I would hope that we could um, bump that up somehow. Um, also, there was, um, as we discussed, um, as Matthew presented to us, um, I think two meetings ago, the uh, the final vote has been changed to a weighted vote of 66 percent of um, of the cities to to vote in the affirmative. Um, as a matter of making a proper statement, I'm hoping that it's going to be a unanimous vote. Um, a couple of other observations. There seems to be a general consensus. Um, if I took, if I were to take a temperature at a room, um, everybody's everybody seems pretty much on board with with, um, with making this happen. And um, this is a big deal. This is 13 communities taking um, full 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 authority of. Um, of a w wastewater treatment facility, and um, and there's at least a there's at least a 20-year vested interest in it financially, so um, it's a it's a big vote. Uh, Veolia is a French company. This is something brand new I found out on Friday. They would be um, they would be considered as a management contracting company to um, to manage the facility. Um, from everything I've heard, this is the right company for the right job. So. Um, I'm going to give a thumbs up to Veolia. Um, there are a few details to work out. Um, I won't. I won't name specific public officials from specific cities. Um, there does sub seem to be overall, and definitely from my point of view, um, a couple of sore feelings towards Wayne County for for um, maybe lack of leadership and lack of proper management over the decades. Um, we could probably talk ad nauseum about that, but I will not. So, um, I mean, the past is the past. We move forward, right? So uh, we'll leave that leave that rest. And um, if anybody noticed, the stock market took a little hiccup today and on Friday. Um, boy, could I go on about that if I put on my economics hat, but it, I've already been talking for nine and a half minutes. So these things happen. Um, the market is overvalued. I, I have stressed that many previous times. My concern, of course, is the bond market, which is something that will affect Lincoln Park directly. As with DUA, we have to float a revenue bond to um, pay for the $57.5 million to Wayne County. So, so when, when these things happen within the market, this is part of what I've said for, for years now at this microphone and there. Um, Lincoln Park does not operate in a vacuum. We're part of the entire world. So... Um, what happens in the stock market affects these bond rates. Um, hopefully over the next few months I'll have some more time to think about where all that's going to work out. But um, as of right now, I would just say that there's a new Fed chairman in town, and since he's not an economist, maybe the bond market is just uh, doing a little shot across his bow. That's kind of economic speak, insider baseball. Call it what you will. It's a big deal. It actually does matter. More to come on that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, be mindful that our next meeting will be on Tuesday due to President's Day on the 19th, so the next council meeting will be Tuesday, February 20th. And uh, I guess a, something that never happened before at the Lincoln Park High School pertaining to the swim team in which they won all of their, their races at a particular day. A recent, I believe it was Taylor. Taylor. Taylor that you went up against, so kudos to... Uh, Coach Higgins and the uh, Lincoln Park swim team. That, if you do something that's never been done in the history of a school, that's pretty good. Uh, speaking of uh, the high school, Judge Clifton has had uh, a lot of, he's been at the forefront in the war against opiate deaths. I would, there's no other way of, of, of putting that. He's put a lot of his own time into uh, making that issue known and putting the uh, the story out from our local chapter of the Families Against Narcotics or or FAN that he has spearheaded. He uh, made arrangements to make presentations at the or assemblies at the Lincoln Park High School and the Lincoln Park Middle School. There were a total of four of those that took place and each student in attendance that day were able to hear presentations. Uh, you know, I was there, hoo-hoo. Um, but uh, 
Judge Clifton, um, Congresswoman Dingell made a very moving presentation about uh, our, her, her sister. And then there was um, Kara Clemente from the, uh, our state rep made an excellent presentation also. But the main purpose of this was to have three young ladies come up and tell their stories of how addiction has affected, have affected their lives and the things that they have done to, to counter it and to tell them, the kids, to you know, not go down that road. And they were very effective. I listened to these three ladies make their presentation four times, and it uh, rung a bell each, each time that it was very emotional. And for to hear a pin drop when you're talking to seventh and eighth graders is quite an accomplishment, folks. So um, kudos for uh, Judge Clifton for, for putting this on and for those uh, ladies who were in attendance that made that uh, brave case of, of talking about their failures and things going on in their lives to better the lives of the, of the children there at the high school. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Clerk, call the roll. Council Persons Murphy. Yes. Garzinski. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Kelsey. Yes. Mayor Kearns. Yes. yes. Good.